Welcome back, everyone, to Bocuse France and the final of the 2021 Bowling Promotion Tour, sponsored by Cupica AMF. And here we are at our final match of this Masters Series with Carl Eklund in his second game against Daria Pajok. Eklund defeated Pajok 258 to 204 in our last match, and he needs to defeat her twice since Daria was the number one seed. Eklund doing so, getting the first game taken care of, and now can he do it again to win this Masters Series? Bruce Hall here. I'm your international voice for this competition, and young Carl Eklund will start things off on the left lane. This young man, if you haven't seen him, you're in for a treat. Lots of power, throwing urethane back up, two-hander, and watch the power and shape this young man is able to achieve with urethane. And he's got power to spare as he'll get up on this left lane. He shot 235 and 258 for his last two games and looks like something distracted him here. So he'll get up and reset and start over. And Daria, meanwhile, in the end of the last game was fishing around trying to get herself lined up. So let's see how she does on this pair. Eklund kicked things off right where he left off with a strike and beautiful shot there by Carl Eklund. 16 years old, this young man. What a future he has. Now Daria Payo touring at PWPA member in the States. Member of the Weber College team, Rookie of the Year in 2017. And now moving left on that right-hand lane with a beautiful flush strike to kick things off. And smiling at her compatriots there in the back watching. And watch this release right between the fourth and fifth arrow. And that's as deep as she's been in this competition. She had to move in there to find the right combination of head oil and back end and the more aggressive surface in the reality. And now in the left lane, the drier of the two lanes, she's balled down to the IQ Tour. And this is a less aggressive surface. And let's see how she does here. Playing about the same line, but the ball does read a little bit in the mid lane and comes up for a four pin. And by international rule, Daria does get eight pins of handicap in this match, and we will calculate that as we go through. And if Daria were to make this spare, which I would expect her to do, she'll have 28 in the first. And we'll see how Eklund responds. He'll need a, a strike and a double to kick things off just to catch Daria with her handicap. And no problem on the four pin there. So Hayak with strike spare to kick things off. Once again, we're at Silver Bowl in Bocuse, France, about 200 miles northwest of Paris. This is the Bowling Promotion Tour, sponsored by Cubica AMF. You can learn about this tour at BowlingPromotionTour.com. My friend Bruno Badone taking signups for the 2022 tour. It is a tremendous time touring France in the last two weeks of September. And here's Eklund with his second shot. Slaps that seven out of there. And beautiful shot there by Eklund. Let's watch the replay here and watch that four pin, the second pin from the left of your screen. He comes up and watch how it goes into the flat cutter and just slaps that seven out of there. That's an indication of the right power and the right speed. One thing we're going to have to watch for in this match, Carl throwing urethane and oil stays on the outside of a urethane ball, unlike with reactive where it sometimes will soak in. And there's a six pin a little bit high in the pocket. You can actually see the oil amass on the ball as it goes down the lane. Watch the shiny part sew up and it doesn't flare very much. So what that ball is doing is depositing some of that oil down at the back end of the lane. And this is Carl's third game on this pair. And we might expect a little bit of carry down, meaning that the ball might not have that same strong move on the back end through the pins. Let's see if that's a factor later on in the match here. And no problem on the spare there by Carl. So he goes double nine spare to give him the one pin lead going into Daria's third frame.
And another beautiful shot there by Taria. No doubt about that strike. And good shot. She's lined up on that right lane. And now let's see what move she makes off of that four pin. And look at that release. Just all power. Such touch and feel. And look at that ball just dead flush through the pins. And now can she make the move and double up? She is down by one pin. This would give her the nine pin lead. And don't make the turn. That came high again, but gets the four seven trip. Yeah, slap that one out. And a little bit high, a little bit high, a little bit high, but oh yes, Bowler's best friend. Head pin goes to the sideboard and trips out the four seven. So give Pyoke now the nine pin lead. No matter what Carl does. Let's see if he can come back. And there is a ripping smothering of the six pin. And look at the power of this head pin as it goes up, goes against the sideboard and comes screaming back to just smother that six pin. Look at that. And that's all power, even though he was light in the pocket. And beautiful shot there by Eklund. And once again, Eklund with power to spare. Can he double up? And bring this back to the one pin match. Yeah, that's a little bit out left. Oh, ring seven. Just a little bit left, and maybe we're seeing just a touch of that carry down we mentioned before. And uh, actually, it looks like we've got a setup that we need here. Carl Eklund has the best of all worlds when it comes to bowling. He's got two hands, so he's got all the power. No thumb hole. He's got a backup ball, so he's using the smooth part of the lane, the left side of the lane. He's got urethane under control, and he's got it doing backflips in the back part of the lane and driving through the pins. So that's almost as much back end as I've ever seen on a urethane ball. It's really quite impressive. And when he shoots spares like the seven pin, he's going to be able to hook at it like a normal right-hander. So that opens up the lane and makes the spares easier. So this young man really working all angles of the game of bowling to give himself the best chance. So let's see how he does here. Or might I say the sport of bowling. And here's Carl on this seven pin. We did finally get the setup there. So you'll see him hook normally into the seven pin without any problem. And good shot there on the seven pin by Carl. Now Daria with the nine pin lead. Can she extend things out here and really start to pull away? She's got the right lane pretty much figured out. And the left lane, she just got a little bit of a high shot to carry. Let's see if she can turn this into a string of strikes here. And guess what? Another beautiful shot on the right lane. High flush. And Aria Payak off to the races. And there is, look at the turn on this ball. Just a beautiful shot, giving her now the 19 pin lead. And looking very strong. But now here's a ball change on the left lane. And I guess even though she had the four pin and then struck, she did not like the reaction of that IQ Tour. So she's balling up. This is a more aggressive surface on the reality. I would assume she's moved her feet left, maybe a hair. Let's see how this behaves. Oh, no, the ball went through the break point and goes light into the head pin, leaving the 2-4-10 split. And definitely not the reaction she was looking for. That wasn't a bad shot. I think she hit what she was looking at. She had plenty of turn on the ball. It just went right through the break point. I think she expected that stronger surface to slow down, turn left, and get up to the pocket. But it did not do so. So there's a seven count for Daria, which will cost her some count. And now trying for the spare and ends up with just eight out. So. That's going to give her, with handicap, 
131 in the sixth. And Carl, she still has the lead, actually. She still got a two pin lead. But that did not portend well for her adjustment on that left lane. Let's see what Carl does here. Again, down by two only. He got that out to the left pretty far. Doesn't quite make the corner and comes up for a ringing seven once again. That's back to back. And turn it up, turn it up. Come on. And it goes ring seven. And now Carl will once again use that hook ball into the seven pin to convert, hopefully. And we will have ourselves a three pin match. Daria will still have a three pin lead going into the seventh frame. And no problem on the seven pin there. And that's a good cover. So Eklund now on the left lane. Once again, we've added in the eight pins for Daria, giving her 131 in the sixth. And Carl, if he were to strike here, would have 128 in that frame. That's a three pin match. So let's see what he does. Does he make any adjustment off the seven pin? It's a really tough move to make because you're so close and that's a high flush shot. Whatever he did, it worked. So he just came right into the pocket. Solid strike for Eklund, putting himself right within striking distance of Pyok. What a match. It was Eklund's seventh frame. We're now three pins apart. Now, can Daria do what she's been doing on this right lane? She's been automatic already with three strikes on this lane and three attempts. Let's see what she does here and gets it a little right, and that ball didn't make the corner. Goes out now for a two pin, and doesn't quite have the turn she needs. And look at that ball just kind of sail through the break point. It doesn't slow down and make the corner as she needs it to. And she comes up leaving just the two pin. A little disappointed in that shot. I think she liked it a little better than the result. So now she's faced with the two pin spare. And here she goes. No problem on the two pin there, makes the cover. Still has the three pin lead, but Eklund on the strike. And what do we now do? If you're Daria, what do we do on this left hand lane? How do we respond? And how do we adjust? She's going back to the IQ tour now. She did not like the reaction she had with the reality. So she's back with the IQ. And her problem here is this ball was reading pretty hard on the mid lane. Let's see what happens here. Gets that to the right, make your turn. And that doesn't make the turn. It comes up late for an 810. So she's in this very tough situation on this left lane where she had one go high, had one go high again, then she moves with a more aggressive ball. It doesn't make the turn. She goes back to the original ball and it again sails through the break point, leaves her an 8-10 split. And this is definitely gonna put her in a deficit against Carl now. And Eklund takes the lead sitting on the bench and that would be by 10 pins. And again, we'll give Daria her eight pin handicap in the eighth with 158. So she has a 218 possible. And Eklund now only in the 2 0s. So still a very close match. But Eklund gets that one out to the dry, recovers, and give him the strike. Huge shot there for Carl Eklund. And look at how it goes off the dry. Got that one definitely to the left. But it picked up on the dry and came back. And sometimes. The way to overcome that carry down is, and you have dry boards to work with, get the ball out to the dry and let it read a little harder and then turn through the pocket. So a pretty good adjustment there by Eklund, getting enough power to get the ball through the pins. Gives him now the 10 pin lead. And now can Eklund do it again? No, ring seven. Actually, Eklund now with the 19 pin lead. 
by virtue of that double. And another ring seven. So we are seeing evidence of that carry down with Eklund making basically the same shots that he was striking with that come down now to be corner pins. And hooks into it, no problem. Once again, I'd invite you to wait at the end of the video and see commentary by Matt McNeil, analysis and interviews with the players with Olivier. And stay tuned for that at the end of this video. And once again, Bruce Hall, it's been my pleasure calling these matches for you. And thanks so much to Bruno Badone for coordinating and organizing these matches. And here's Daria. Very, very important shot here. That she get to 218 and put some pressure on Carl. And once again, coming up light with the two pin. All of a sudden, Daria lost her back end reaction. She thinks she's lined up in the right part of the lane. She makes the shot that earlier turned and struck for her. And now all of a sudden, the ball's accelerating as it goes through the mid lane. She can't get the turn. So another two pin is going to give her now a maximum of 208. With Eklund cruising at a two teen pace. So Carl at this point, even if Daria doubles, would only need a mark in the 10th. And Carl Eklund in the driver's seat now. Daria just having trouble on these last four shots, really all of them pretty much coming up light to her surprise. And I think she's moving for them, just getting a, a surprising and, and not a good reaction off of this. And that one, that was just a pull. And that one came up through the beak and unfortunately leaves a six pin, her max now in the 190s. And she'll barely cover the six pin there. And have one more match, and now she switches to yet another ball, a trend. And this will probably go through the front a little better, and it, and it, of course it does. And of course, dead, stri dead flush strike there. So another good shot by Daria. And give her the 197 finish with her handicap. And now Eklund really just needs a little bit of count. If he were to have a five pin disaster, we could have perhaps a match, but he really only needs, I think, eight or nine. And that will do it. And he, he thought he had the strike, but it is the mixer 10 pin. And that's enough. That will give Carl, even if he were to miss it, 205. And that's enough to win this Masters stepladder. Congratulations to Carl Eklund, 16 years old, putting on a show here against the very, very tough Daria Pajok. And what a future for this young man. Once again, Bruce Hall here. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And a great finishing strike there by Eklund. Again, interviews with Olivier, Olivier and analysis by Matt McNeil coming up. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you next year for the 2022 Bowling Promotion Cup. Le lauréat de cette douzième édition de la compétition, c'est donc Carl Eklund. Carl, congratulations. Um, how does it feel to win this tournament? It feels amazing, but it's uh, kind of hard to stand up right now. <laughs> oui, c'est incroyable, mais on a du mal à réaliser encore. Um, Daria, you were the last winner of this tournament. How does it feel to get beaten by a young guy of 15 years old? Qu'est-ce que ça fait d'être battu par un, un jeune joueur de 15 ans? It doesn't matter who beat me. It's never fun to lose, you know. Carbo Gray. And I don't think I had a chance to win in this match. Who 
what didn't work for you in this game? The fact that there was eight people playing before me on my right of the lane, I felt like there was no chance for me to score high. C'était compliqué de scorer euh, parce qu'il y a eu euh, bah, beaucoup de joueurs avant sur cette, euh, sur cette lane. Thank you very much, you. both of you. Thank you. Voilà, c'est donc la fin de cette douzième édition de la Cubica AMF Bowling Promotion Tour. Et euh, bah, on va faire un petit résumé hein, de, de, cette, de cette compétition avec Matthew. Uh, Matthew, what do you think of the competition? Well, I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, Carl Eklund is an amazing young man, 15 years old, and be able to play uh, both sides of the lane, right-handed and uh, with the backup, he's able to play the left part of the lane. I think that was the big advantage. We saw Chris Viali shoot 279. The right side looked very, very good. Um, things changed in practice, and uh, Chris's look went away. He shot 270, and then he shot 180. So the right side became less playable, and the left side, which was fresh, uh, was, stayed preserved for Carl, and he took advantage of it. And uh, that's what helped him uh, prevail over Daria. Thank you very much, Matthew. Pour résumer, eh bien, on retiendra la victoire d'un très jeune joueur, 15 ans, euh, capable de tout faire hein, avec une, une boule de bowling. Et puis également, eh bien, les, les plus hauts scores hein, et le plus haut score, 279 réalisé par l'américain Chris Vaillalet. Thank you very much, Matthew. Merci à vous. Merci également euh, au bowling d'Angers. Et on se retrouve l'année prochaine pour une nouvelle édition. Salut.